My name is Matt Jones and I am a random variable. Let's talk about probability distributions. So in this set of notes we're going to talk about random variables. A random variable is the outcome of an experiment that cannot be predicted with certainty, but it's numerically valued and has units. These things have distributions and we'll, we'll talk about how to compute the mean and the standard deviation of random variables, at least discrete ones. The continuous case it gets a little more complicated and actually requires calculus, so we won't carry that out exactly, but we'll, we will talk about means for continuous random variables to some degree. Then we'll focus on two random variables in particular, namely the binomial random variable and the normal random variable. There are many, many other kinds of random variables, but these are, these are a couple of random variables, just two of thousands of random variables that arise very naturally in natural and industrial settings, have a lot of applications in probability and in statistical modeling. The binomial random variables track the number of successes that occur in n identical trials, where all the trials are independent and have the same success probability. So this is a very natural kind of setting. For example, if, if you go to shoot hoops and you take 10 shots, if your success rate is 70%, then what's the probability that you make exactly two? Or what's the probability that you make exactly four of the ten shots. Normal random variables are also very natural. These are the random variables. We've talked a lot about uh, you know the ones that are sort of mound shaped like this. These are very specifically mound shaped. They are sort of the canonical mound shaped or bell shaped random variables. When people talk about bell shaped random variables they mean these ones, the normal ones. Okay so we are finally going to formalize that a little bit. Let's get started. So first of all, a random variable is a quantitative variable whose value depends on chance. We'll use these to model behavior of populations. Again, we're still doing probability here, we're not doing statistics, so we're thinking about the behavior of a variable across an entire population here, okay? So we have discrete random variables. Hey, we already know what discrete variables are. These things take on values from a finite or countably infinite set of numbers. Introducing this word random in here, in the middle there, oh, it just means that now we have something that, you know, it's it's a discrete variable, but its value depends on chance. Okay, similarly, we have continuous random variables. These are continuous variables, but they're but we want to think of them as outcomes of experiments and they take on values from a continuum due to chance. Now we usually use capital letters as you'll see for random variables and lowercase letters for their sort of deterministic counterparts or the possible values and you'll see all this stuff will sort of start clicking once we do some examples. Now this is really important the distribution of a random variable. We've talked about distributions before so it should come as no surprise that the distribution of a random variable is really two things. One, two. One, it's a list of all the possible values that the variable can take on and number two it's also a list of all the probabilities of those values. Distributions can be represented as functions or lists or charts or graphs all kinds of there are many different ways to indicate distributions just as long as they indeed indicate these two things a list of all the possibilities and a list of all of the probabilities. So here's an example let's let X capital X again remember like we said before we'll use capital letters to denote random variables okay capital X there it stands for the random number of cups of coffee that your professor drinks each day. You can't predict this with certainty. You just don't really know how much your professor's going to have to drink in the morning. You might have zero with probability 2% or you might have one cup with probability 5% or two cups with probability 15% or three cups with 35% chance or four cups with 43% chance. All of this stuff right here is the distribution, right? Because in the top row I've got the number of cups, right? Which are these are the possible things that can occur. I just marked right through that. Yeah, he can have zero or one or two or three or four. It can't have more than four because I don't know some reason he can't. And then the second list gives you the relative frequencies or the probabilities, right? And here you see we have our probability expression p for probability and then parenthesis for of. And in the inside there you have an event, and this is the event that x equals x. Holy smokes, what does that mean? It's the event that the random number of cups of coffee that your professor has takes on the value of little x. Okay, big X remember is the random variable. Okay, so it's the chance that the random number of cups of coffee takes on the value of little x, where little x now is cycling through these numbers. So, what is the chance that your professor has more than two cups of coffee today? More than two cups today. More than two cups, strictly more. Okay, how do you get more? It's three or four, right? Probability that x 
is more than two, and that, you know another way I could write that is the probability that x is at least three, right? By axiom number three, remember those probability axioms. This is going to be the probability that x equals three plus the probability that x equals four, right? Because this is really the probability that x equals three or x equals four, right? And so because this is this is the union symbol here, right? Union, I'm taking the union of those two events in there, and those events are disjoint, then I can write it this away. So that's by axiom, probability axiom number three, okay? How is the probability that x equals three? Oh, that's uh, this guy right here, 35%. And then the probability that x equals four is 0.43. Okay, so what does that spell? 78%, okay? What's the chance? That your professor has at least two cups tomorrow. At least two cups. Okay. Technically, you might need a different random variable. I could use x zero for the number of co cups of coffee that we have today, and I could put zeros on there like that. And then you know, then I could use x one for the number for for the random number of cups of coffee that he has tomorrow. Okay. But it doesn't really matter. We just need to think about this as being a big X. Okay, chance that he has at least two cups tomorrow. So that's the chance that x is at least two, right? Hey, can't I write this as uh, this is the chance that x equals two union x equals three union x equals four, right? Isn't this just the probability that x equals two plus the probability that x equals three plus the probability x equals four? Yeah. Now we've already done part of this. This much is 78%, right? And so what's this part? This is just that 15%, right? So the answer there is just 15% plus 78% or 93%. Okay, 93% chance. And look at this, 93% is that, plus what's left? 7%, okay? 7% chance that he has one or none, okay? When you have a distribution like this, by axiom number two, all of these chances have to sum up to 100%, right, or one. Because all of these these events, you know, that big X equals zero and big X equals one and big X equals two, all of those those five events are disjoint, but they're also exhaustive. They make up the entire sample space. So you can think of it kind of like this. If this is your Venn diagram, maybe you have the event that X equals zero is over there, and then, you know, the event that X equals one is over there. The event that x equals two is a little bit bigger. You know, it's like 15%. The event that x equals three is, you know, like that. And then, and finally, you've got the event that x equals four over here. So these are all these events, right? Big x equals two. Big x equals one. Big x equals none. Right? And then you can think of the probabilities as the areas, the surface area. In here, that's the probability that big X equals four, and then this is the probability that big X equals three, and this is the probability that big X equals two. And then the area of this region is the probability that X equals one, and then the white region, that's the probability, you know, the area of that white region is the two percent, right? Finally, what is the average or mean or expected number of cups your professor has each day? Gosh, how do you do that? The weights are all screwed up here. I can't just average. You know, I mean, if if I weren't if I wasn't thinking clearly, which uh, you know maybe maybe that's true, but if I just take zero plus one plus two plus three plus four and divide all that stuff by five, I get two, right? But that's not correct because hey, look, there's a big heavy weight here where x equals four. That's going to happen a lot more often, say, than where x equals zero or x equals one. Okay, so what we want to do here is we don't want to take an average that way. We want to take a weighted average, just like we do, say, when you're, you know, when we average your grades for the course. You know, certain things are worth more than others. Okay, so here's what we do, and I'll use the symbol mu for this because that's the symbol we use for the mean for a random variable. Hey, it's also the mean for a population, right? Remember we said that we use random variables to describe population behaviors. So in fact, I might even say, hey, it's the mean for x, the random variable called x. And what I'm going to do then is I'm going to say, hmm, it could be zero with a certain probability, and then, or it could be one with a certain probability, or it could be two with a certain probability, okay? Or it could be three with a certain probability, or it could be 
4 with a certain probability. So in fact that's exactly what I'm going to do and I have those probabilities 0 times 2% plus 1 times 5% plus 2 times 15% plus 3 times 35% plus 4 times 43%. Okay, so if I use my calculator to get that, 0 times 0 0.02, of course that's 0, plus 1 times 0 0.05 plus 2 times 0 0.15 plus 3 times 0.35 plus 4 times 0.43 and what does that spell? 3.12 is the average. 3.12. It's a lot different from 2, right? If you just add the numbers up and divide by the number of them, this is just sort of the simple arithmetic average, right? That's not right. That's not what we want to do. This, this is what we want to do. This is how you get the mean for a random variable. Notice that it is, in fact, different. It can be very different. If all the probabilities were equally likely, then this method would have been correct. That is, if, if all the probabilities were 20%, then they'd be uniformly likely, and then it would certainly be 2. But it's not. Your professor is much more likely to have 4 cups of coffee than he is, say, anything else. 4 is the mode here. He's very likely to have 3 or 4 cups. So that brings us to the mean or expected value of a random variable. So here's the formula for it. Yeah, and again, we use the symbol mu for it. No accident that it also is the symbol for the population mean. Or sometimes we write e of x like that. They mean the same thing. This, when we write this notation, we read that as the expected value of x. The expected value of x. Now by expected value, we don't mean it like we might mean it in day-to-day -day speak, okay? For example, in this problem here, we got the mean or expected value to be 3.12. You would never actually expect your professor to drink exactly 3.12 cups, right? Because according to this distribution, he always has either 0 or 1 or 2 or 3 or 4, nowhere in between. This is an average. It is an average average, average, average. Don't feel compelled to round this number to the nearest integer, okay? You would never expect to see, you know, if, if it's a discrete random variable that's integer valued, never, you know, for example, the number of siblings, uh, if you take the average, you know, what, what do they say? The average number of kids a family has is 2.3. You'd never expect to find a family that actually has 2.3 kids. That would be gross. So the mean or expected value of this random variable, it's defined to be this. Okay, well what the heck is that? That's exactly what we just did. It says to add up or sum up all these products, right? You take, you know, for each one there, you take this is the value and then you multiply it by its probability weight. Okay, and you do that for each possible value and probability combination and then you add up all those products. Okay, if you look at what we did here, that's exactly what we did. There's a value multiplied by its probability plus value times 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 its probability, right? 